did the impossible during a year of crisis. Thank you. Despite the difficulties, you stood strong. For those of you working on the front lines, to the leaders of Cooperative Health who turned instabilities into guidance, thank you. For those of you conducting virtual visits, to members of our IT staff who supported those virtual visits, thank you. I want to take the opportunity to express my appreciation and honest thanks for your dedication, flexibility, and creativity during a very challenging year. March 16th, 2021 will mark a year of the COVID-19 pandemic in South Carolina. In the midst of it all, you rose to the challenge. You remain motivated, loyal, professional, selfless, and I thank you for showing up every day and giving your best. Today, on this year's Employee Appreciation Day, in the midst of our thankfulness for you and your dedication to cooperative health, I want to continue to uplift and charge you with the following. I know that there will be some days that you will not feel like coming to work. I challenge you to continue to show up anyway. Our patients, your coworkers, and the cooperative depend on you. And remember, your position at Cooperative Health is not what defines you. The position that you hold at Cooperative Health, no matter the role or title, is a small portion of who you are, who you are becoming. For every remedial task that you have done, thank you. For every piece of paper you've picked up off of the floor, thank you. For the hours that you've sacrificed and didn't receive acknowledgement for, thank you. For every patient's tears that you have dried, every nose that you have wiped, thank you. I encourage you to continue to do the right thing as a team member at Cooperative Health, even when no one is looking. Continue to be outstanding, awesome, principled, and so absolutely fantastic that your talent and skills cannot be diminished. I am in awe of you and we celebrate you today. Always, always remember, we are strong, we are dedicated, we are resilient, we are cooperative health. Congratulations. Greetings, Cooperative Health family. I'm Dr. Eric Schleter, your Chief Medical Officer. I'm fortunate to work with an extraordinary team of clinicians. These dedicated men and women help keep our communities healthy and improve the health of our Midlands. Because our commitment, effort, and talents, we are a leading community health center. Our clinicians are one of the reasons why I consider us to be a premier community health center. March 25th through 31st is National Physicians Week. And March 30th, we celebrate National Doctors Day. I wanna say a special thank you to our team of doctors. Congratulations for a job well done during this unprecedented year. We thought National Doctors Day would provide a great opportunity for you to get to know some of our doctors. So enjoy listening to their stories. Hi, my name is Dr. Danielle Davis. I'm a pediatrician at Pediatrics of Newberry, and I've been with Cooperative Health for the past 12 years. I'm Dr. Lynn Wilson, and I work over at Sterling Sharp Pediatrics, and I've been with the Cooperative since 1991. As a young child, probably in elementary school, I had a wonderful experience with my own pediatrician. I enjoyed how every time I went to see him, he was laughing and had a good time at what he did every day. And so I said, that's what I wanna do. And so I pursued that path and tried it sometimes to find something different and kept getting pulled back into the same area. And I love what it is that I do and I wouldn't change it for anything. Uh, growing up, I always uh, was fascinated with science and biology. And so going into medicine was not um, too far of a stretch to be able to um, use those skills and those loves and stuff. And then I also love to um, serve people and work with people and um, had planned actually to go do some sort of missions work and so medicine again just seemed like a good fit to be able to do that. So I started off actually in nursing and have been accepted into nursing school and uh, just a guy that I really respected a lot when I was in college uh, really encouraged me to instead change to go in to be a, a doctor and so 
being 19, I thought, why not? And so I changed everything and said no to nursing school and finished doing all the other undergraduate stuff that I need to do for medicine uh, to be in the medical school and applied and made it in. Pediatrics specifically just because I just love children and they are just the, um, the best. They don't want to be sick and they just do things to, to try to get well and to be better. Um, and then too, just the joy of being able to help parents uh, know how to do things to help their children be as healthy and then as happy as they can be as well. So my greatest strength, that's a hard question, but I would say compassion. Being able to meet people where they are um, and deal with the things that they're going through allows me to be able to help them out on all levels, not just within their personal health, but within their well-being. Um, within our office, we try and ensure that our staff is able to be compassionate as well. Even on our worst days, meeting our families where they are helps them to get the most out of each and every visit and each and every day. I didn't know that it would get quite as big as it had. I'm not surprised though. Dr. Hamilton is such a man of vision and so that it has grown um, as large as it has is not surprising to me um, and certainly speaks of the dedication of this man who has given so much to the cooperative and I'm just so excited that we are um, a premier community health center uh, in this area and just look forward to what we will be able to do um, in the future. So um, the reality is I didn't envision that. I would have been fine, honestly, with just our little bitty office at Eau Claire Pediatrics at 4801 Monticello, but so glad that Dr. Hamilton had a vision that was more than that and has allowed us to be able to deliver quality health care to people um, in this community and beyond. Ooh, there are so many in pediatrics, you'll know that you laugh every day with your patients. I would say my the things that have meant the most have been those situations where I've worked with a family that has struggled with um, illness. Sometimes I haven't been able to tell them exactly what was going on so much as work with a plan to get them to the right place. Recently, I had a parent reach out to me who her children are now in their 20s, and she just wanted to reach back and let me know that through everything they had gone through with setbacks with school, that they were both doing well. One of them has his own business now and just wanted to thank me and um, to say that it had all paid off and that they were doing well. And that means a lot when even in their 20s, they're still remembering you and wanting to still connect. So one of my most memorable stories is um, I was just started out in practice. Uh, I did not have any children at the time. And I remember I had an 18 month old little boy that had been brought in for his well child check by his daddy. And so his dad was describing some very normal 18 month old behaviors that were not acceptable. And so I was trying in all of my wisdom to share with him some ideas that he could use to try to curb that behavior and produce better results from that. And um, so had finished doing all my wonderful teaching that I had. And he looks at me and he said, um, Dr. Wilson, do you have any children? I said, no, sir, not yet. He said, I tell you what, when you have children and your son gets to be 18 months old, you do that stuff and you come back and tell me if it worked or not. Um, and I laughed and I realized that oftentimes what I read about um, is not always practically put into situations because it's just hard. The reality is, is very hard. And so um, that lesson helped me to learn not only with teaching my family's behavior um, modifications to help children um, be a little bit more um, obedient and things like that, but also um, just in helping them to be able to realize that oftentimes when I'm saying all this really quickly about taking a medicine, da da da, that I need to slow down and make sure they're understanding everything that I'm, that I'm saying and that they can um, be able to do the things that I'm asking them to do um, with that. And so that was just a good story to help me remember that oftentimes what is written about and said is not always able to be carried out in reality. And so how can I meld those two together and make sure that, that my patients are gonna be healthy and um, happy by being able to do the things that are gonna be best for them.
Hi, my name is Cheryl Pollock, the dental practice administrator for the dental department. Cooperative Health Family Dentistry is a new addition to our dental department, located at the Clyburn campus, staffed with individuals driven by our mission and our vision values. At Cooperative Health Family Dentistry, our goal is to exceed expectation by providing exceptional dental care to every patient at the same time, building trust with them. Our services include complete exams, x-rays, dental cleaning, filling, extraction, crown and bridge, and also sedation services. Although we have only been open a month, we have seen a great response from the community, and we hope to see more patients in the months to come. As a DPA, it's important to show my team the values of setting goals. When people have set goals, they can become more efficient, more productive, and motivated to exceed in the department of expectation. To do this, I would set good examples by creating goals from our own department. We definitely have an exceptional team that come from a diversity of backgrounds. Our team is passionate about what we do and how we want our patients to feel when they are getting the best care. I would hate to give up any information because we're definitely doing a surprise to them. Just know that we're going to make them feel loved and appreciated.